So today I'm going to talk about how to avoid two really unpleasant things if you're a foreigner investing in U.S. real estate. Um, and that is FERPTA and the estate tax. No, FERPTA is not a sexually transmitted disease. Uh, it is, however, a tax disease, and it stands for the Foreign Investment in Real Property Tax Act of 1980. And what FERPTA does is this. So before 1980, there was a good deal to be had in the U.S. when you invest in U.S. real estate. So you, as a foreigner, you go buy real estate, you wait for it to appreciate, you'd sell it at a gain, just don't pay the tax, take your gain and, and leave. Now, technically, you still owe the tax to the United States uh, by not paying it intentionally. You were evading tax, which is criminal. But as long as you just don't go back to the U.S., you probably were going to get away with it, right? So the U.S. got sick of this. So what they did is they instituted FERPTA. And what FERPTA does is it imposes a withholding tax when a foreigner disposes of U.S. real property. And when I say foreigner, this includes, you know, uh, a, a foreign individual and foreign entities like, like a corporation, right? And so when they dispose of the property, and then a disposition includes a lot of different things, right? So the best way to think of a disposition is if you're a foreigner and you have a piece of U.S. real estate, anytime it changes from your name to somebody else's name, you disposed of it, right? So whether you sold it, you transferred it to an entity, you gifted it to somebody, like you traded it for another piece of property, these are all considered dispositions and trigger FRIPTA. And what FRIPTA requires is that the person purchasing the real estate from the foreigner needs to withhold 15% of the gross proceeds and pay them over to the IRS. So just to use round numbers to make a simple example, you know, let's say the property is transferring for a hundred grand, right? I mean, this is a cheap property in a shithole. So, Instead of the seller receiving that $100,000, they only get $85,000 because the buyer has to give $15,000 to the IRS uh, as, as a prepayment of the tax on any potential gain, right? So assuming, let's, you know, you, continuing with this same example, let's say the guy that sold the property, only, only he paid $80,000 for it, right? So his gain is uh, 20,000 and now assuming that it's a long-term capital gain, meaning he owned it for more than a year, the federal tax on that's 20%. So four grand, right? But the IRS kept 15. So when this dude files his tax return, he's gonna get a refund of 11,000. Uh, but if for some reason that 15,000 was not enough to cover the income tax, um, that 15% was not enough to cover the income tax, then uh, he would have to pay anything over and, and above uh, what was withheld through FERPTA and, and, and what the, the tax due is. In my experience though, withholding 15% of the, like the gross sale price, uh, that withholding amount is always more than, than the actual tax. Now, there is a process that you can go through um, to apply for what's called a withholding certificate and ask the IRS to reduce the amount of the withholding from 15% to the actual tax owed. So in the example that I gave, uh, you can get a withholding certificate from the IRS saying instead of withholding you know, 15% or $15,000, only withhold this $4,000 because that's gonna be the actual tax due. Uh, the problem with getting a withholding certificate is it takes a lot of time, right? So the biggest downside with FERPTA is it's just a pain in the ass, right? So you know, you got to file forms with the IRS, you got to get, you know, tax refunds, or you got to, um, you know, apply for this withholding certificate. And also it puts a burden on the person buying the property from the foreigner because they have to withhold this tax. They got to file forms with the IRS and, and, and pay this money over to the IRS. And in reality, like there's one, it's a pain in the ass. They don't want to do it. Two, they're scared they're going to make a mistake and the IRS is going to somehow make them liable for, you know, taxes or penalties or interest. So a lot of times, you know, buyers avoid buying property from foreigners for exactly this reason. They don't want to deal with FERPTA, right? It's a pain in the ass. It delays escrow. Like 
you know, there's just nothing good about it except for the IRS because they get money. Um, so FRIPTA can kill deals. So, but FRIPTA only applies to foreign sellers, right? So if you were a US seller, then uh, FRIPTA wouldn't apply. So easy solution. Instead of owning your US real estate in your personal name, own it through a US corporation. A US corporation is not a foreign person um, for uh, FRIPTA purposes. So if the corporation, as you as a foreigner then own this US corporation, this US corporation then sells the property, no FRIPTA, right? So you get around one, all the hassle with FRIPTA, uh, and two, you know, you have a bigger buyer pool because they're not going to be worried about all this FRIPTA compliance. Um, and plus, you know, U.S. corporations only have a 21% a corporate tax rate, which is only 1% higher than the long-term capital, capital gains rate uh, of 20% as, it, you know, if you owned it individually. This used to be a big turnoff uh, before the tax reform in 2017 when corporations had a 35% tax rate, you know, it was a big difference, but now with 1%, you know, it's, it's pretty negligible. Uh, so that takes care of FERPTA, right? Partially. So because those shares in that U.S. company, assuming real estate is the only thing that U.S. company owns, those shares in that company are treated the same as um, U.S. real estate because the company would be considered a U.S. real property holding corporation. So if you sold those shares in the U.S. company to like somebody else, you would have, you know, these same FERPTA issues. But, you know, that's a pretty unusual situation. People don't usually sell the company, right? They have the company sell the property and then they like liquidate the company and, and, and take the cash out. Um, but the problem is those shares in the U.S. company are still considered U.S. property for U.S. estate tax purposes. And so if you die owning those shares um, and the value of those shares is greater than $60,000, which it most likely would be if the company owned real estate, uh, then any value, so I'm talking about fair market value, not what you paid for a property, any fair market value of those shares over $60,000 is gonna be subject to US estate tax at up to 40%. Now, if that isn't bad enough, you also are going to have to go through a probate procedure in order for those shares to get passed to your heirs, right? Because those shares are in your name. Somehow they got to get to your heirs name, which means, you know, you got to go to a U.S. probate court and get a judge to order that the shares be transferred to your heir through your will or, you know, whatever kind of estate planning you have in place. You know, if you have a trust or something like that, then, then probate wouldn't be necessary. But they were in your name. You need to go through probate. So you have this issue now that you own these shares in the U.S. company that are, are going to be subject to, to U.S. estate tax if, if you die. Um, and a lot of times that 40% you know, estate tax is a lot, is so much that the foreigner doesn't have the cash to pay it, right? So they wind up having to have the company sell the real estate and, and, and cash it out in order to be able to pay this estate tax. Well, there's a pretty easy solution and it's a tiered structure, right? So you have a foreign corporation own the U.S. corporation and the U.S. corporation owns the real estate. Now, how, why does this work so good? Because what do you own in this structure? The only thing you own in this structure are the shares in the foreign corporation, right? So for example, you can set up a RAC ICC company here in the UAE. There's no income tax here, so it is a fantastic uh, you know, holding holding company structure to hold assets anywhere in the world. So you set up this RAC ICC company. The only thing you own are the shares in this RAC ICC company. Now the shares in the RAC ICC company are not U.S. property for U.S. estate tax purposes. So when you die, you give your RAC ICC shares to whatever to whoever you want, right? Like it has nothing to do with the U.S. So the RAC ICC company then in turn owns a U.S. corporation that owns the real estate. So the U.S. corporation is never going to die. The RAC ICC company is never going to die. So you, you completely solve the estate tax problem because the only thing you own is the RAC ICC company. And when the U.S. company sells the real estate because it's not a foreign person, no FERPTA. So with this structure, 
uh, you completely eliminate FERPTA, you completely eliminate the estate tax, you can save a ton of money uh, and hassle and have a bigger buyer pool by having your U.S. real estate holdings structured properly. We can help you do that. We do that all the time. We have a U.S. Uh, real estate FERPTA uh, and estate tax blocker solution that we set up for clients all the time. It works great. Uh, it's easy to maintain. We can show you how to do it. Check us out online at www.esquiregroup.com or shoot us an email at info at esquiregroup.com. Peace!